Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going back to my apocalyptic view of, uh, of this whole thing, okay? Um, and I guess I, I may have been influenced by uh, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, and, the, and those movies, you know, with the with coming from the future and, and uh, bat these machines battling each other. And I think that um, it's not too far off. I mean, it's not going to be like that, but I'm saying the machines battling each other is going to be constant. So the artificial intelligence battling each, the artificial intelligence until the, until the one that is dominant will, will defeat one uh, and, and penetrate and defeat the system, whether it's the aggressor or the, or the defender. Um, but which to me makes it much more important that we are resilient and that we're not wholly dependent on anything. Um, and instead of becoming more and more dependent on these systems, we become less dependent. Yes, it's nice to have, as long as they're working, they're great, but you have to assume that one day they won't be working. And we have to continue to operate. So where are we in terms of resiliency, of the, ab the availability of us to decouple um, critical systems vital to, to America? Our, our electric grid uh, would be one. Our piping would be another, et cetera. All those things that are vital to, to our everyday life. Where is CISA in trying to get companies and the American government to be able to decouple or extract itself from the automated systems and, and still give us the ability to operate? Because I do believe that every one of those systems eventually will be compromised, eventually will be overcome, eventually will be attacked. And um, and we may find ourselves in a in a really in really bad shape, especially if it's an overwhelming kind of attack uh, to try to cripple the Ameri uh, you know America. So anybody want to tackle that one? Because we seem to be looking more more and more about how we can defend our systems, and I believe that that's great. But those systems are going to be compromised one day. They're going to be overwhelmed one day. So we have to have a way to not be so dependent on those systems uh, so that we can continue to operate. Go ahead. I think that one of the things that with any, any sort of preparation for the inevitable or preparation for potential um, disaster or um, you know, catastrophe, if you will, really is rooted in exercises. I think that from an exercise perspective, we have to look at where we are vulnerable, certainly, but we have to include all the players. And it's not just the systems that get attacked, but also everything from every place within the supply chain, as well as emergency management systems, as well as municipalities and localities. And I think that one of the things that CISA does so well is around um, PSAs for instance, and I know that this is sort of like a first step in, in this realm. And what I mean by that is that does the average American know exactly what to do if they go to the ATM and it's failed, or if their cell phone is not working, or if they um, can't get communication? Oh, we're no, the cell phone is not working. We're done. Yeah, okay, exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. And so we have to have default strategies. And the key piece of that is that these things have to be devised and also communicated so everyone sort of knows what to happen when the, the unthinkable happens. Yes, Swanson. Um, something to add here, uh, you mentioned AI attacking AI. What is actually being attacked and what is vulnerable? What is vulnerable is the supply chain. It's how AI is being built. It's the ingredients, as I mentioned before in my cake analogy. Most of AI is actually built on open source software. Synopsis did a report that 80% of the components in AI is open source. Open source is at risk. CISA can set guidelines and recommendations and also, with the government's help, bug bounties to actually go in there and secure the supply chain. That's what AI will be attacking. How it's I'm, not, I'm not so much, you know, I know about the supply chain. I was actually worried about the critical infrastructure itself. Yep. Our, our grid, our electric grid uh, being knocked out our energy grid being knocked out. Uh, and you're right about food, you know, the, the, the supply chain, et cetera, food and all that, all that being knocked out. Um, 
And I'm not so sure that we're resilient there. I'm not so sure that, I'm pretty sure that we have relied way too much on automated systems that are gonna be very, very vulnerable in the future and that we haven't focused enough on, on resiliency of if in fact those systems go down that we are heavily reliant on, uh, do we have a way to, to operate without those systems? Mr. Chairman, if you may. Yeah. So I, I like to respond. So your scenario, totally get. And let me play that back. Industry. By the way, the, the movies were the Terminators. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, the industry, energy pipelines. The use, predictive maintenance and pump seals and valves. The attack, we're gonna trick, manipulate models to purposely invalidate alerts and pressures. Impact, physical and mechanical failure. How do we remediate? How do we solve for this? This is where pen testing and red teaming comes in, model robustness. When I talk about the supply chain, it's how these things are built and making sure those are resilient. But I, I agree with we gotta protect the critical infrastructure and we need to take records of what machine learning is in what infrastructure and go and stress test those machine learning models. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, I yield back. Gentleman yields back.